I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 8 years old, so 30 some odd years ago. And for the most part, I've, my story has always been that I felt it was really sort of the perfect age. I was old enough that I sort of understood what it was. I could take my own shots. I understood how to test my blood. But I was young enough that I wasn't a teenager. I wasn't set in my ways. I wasn't disruptive. So in general, you know, it's just been a part of my life. The biggest thing I would say that's been a challenge in my life has been the inconsistencies. I'm active. I do a lot. I play a lot of tennis. I'm a realtor. I don't have a regular job schedule. So I don't wake up and go to work and come home and eat at the same hours. So that's not ideal for a diabetic. <laughs> and I've made it work, but there's ups and there's downs. So as a diabetic, you get used to the ups and downs. You get used to you test your blood, you take your insulin, you eat your meal. You're going you're gonna to go up and then you know, a little while later you're going to come down. And if you plan it right, you don't go too low and you don't go too high. But life isn't perfect and you do go too high and you do go too low. When I heard about this drug, I, you know, I didn't know a lot about it. I knew there were chances that it could lessen the amount of insulin I needed, that it could help simplify the situation, I guess. Um, I heard you could lose weight, which obviously sounded good. Um, so I thought I'd try it. I still to this day don't know if I was on the drug, but I know I was on the drug. So two days in, I started noticing, well, first of all, my blood sugars were low. So I had to start pulling off, right? Take less long acting, take less short acting. And eventually I started sort of settling and figuring it out. But what I started realizing maybe five or six days in was the standard, you know, what I'm used to of like a little up, a little low, a little up, wasn't happening. It was, I test my blood, I take my insulin, I eat an hour later, I'm what I was an hour ago. An hour later, I'm still what I was an hour ago. That's what I started seeing, was like a straight line. Something as a diabetic, you're not used to. And we're not even told it's regular. You're told it's supposed to go up and it's supposed to go down and that's normal, but you just want to limit how high and how low it goes. So that's the challenge. You can go to here, but you don't want to go this high. So that was immediately intriguing to me. So number one, I was taking less insulin. So that's great. I think, I believe it was 25% less insulin was about what we figured out. Um, and the second thing was I wasn't getting the highs and I wasn't getting the lows. And I think what most non-diabetics don't understand is it's not just that your blood sugar is high and that's not great. We don't feel good when our blood sugar is high. I can feel it. And maybe I'm lucky. Maybe most people with diabetes for 30 some odd years don't feel their highs like I do. I I'm not sure, but I feel it. I f used to feel it when I would hit about just over 200, 220 and up. I would just, you know, my legs feel heavy and a headache starts to come and your mouth is dry. Um, that was the first thing is I now notice, I think I've gotten more used to a straight line. I don't go hot that high anymore. I now feel it at 180, which to me is kind of crazy because 180 didn't feel that high to me. It's now kind of high. <laughs> so when I get to 180, I can fix it. So the little, the little bits I get are like this. It's not like this. So... I know that the, the number one thing, at least in my mind, or I assume in the medical world, is you're looking at A1Cs. You want to see that we're keeping it at a consistent level and that it's low enough, not too low. Um, and my A1C did drop when I was on the study. When I was on the study, it did drop. It didn't drop as much as I would have thought it would have. Um, you know, based on everything I've been told through the years, I assume if I have a steady level and I don't have too many highs, too many lows, it's going to drop. It dropped. But for me, it was about how I felt. I didn't feel sick because I wasn't getting high. And, you know, I think everybody knows what a low feels like. You know, I always say to non-diabetics, it's imagine a day where you haven't eaten a lot and you exercised a lot and you just feel weak and your body is like telling you to eat. Well, my body just doesn't fix itself and yours does. That's the way I sort of describe it. I don't know if that's the medical way, but that's the way I say it. I'm not feeling that either. <laughs> so I can go on and have my day and do what I'm having and I'm not... I'm not getting this. I'm getting this. So I went through the study, and at the end of the study, I think it was two weeks when all of a sudden I needed more insulin. Um, I started seeing the highs. I started seeing the lows. I wasn't feeling as good, and I went back to my doctor and said, I was on the study, on the drug. Give me the drug. 